In the laws of nature, there is nothing impossible except that the state of your mind makes it so. Cleaning up this planet is going to be a big job. If we're going to get the climate back to what we want, a lot of work got to be done. But one thing is certain, you need energy. That's important. Basically, the design is a conventional generator. So, tapped into zero point energy. The only person that I know of who has ever succeeded in making a serial effect generator is John Cyril. The electron flow is accelerated to an extremely high rate and it creates a vacuum around the device. And in that vacuum, you develop numbing cold. And numbing cold, as we know today, is a function of superconductivity. It also is a function of gravitational force. For over 60 years, John Searle has tried to give to the world a new kind of energy system, one that would free mankind from the burdens of oil and fossil fuels. From his dreams as a child in pre-World War II England came an understanding of mathematics and magnetic forces that would change his life. From a childhood game of hopscotch came a new understanding of magic squares, a mathematical principle that is 5,000 years old. He could think laterally and not be bound by conventional rules taught through conventional methods that may have an adverse effect on the human mind. John Searle is known all over the world as the inventor of the Searle Effect Generator, a magnetic device consisting of one or more rings, also called plates, and a number of cylindrical rollers that, when in motion, generate electricity. The generator is a magnetic device that is totally magnetic, it is its own prime mover. It will self-start and continue to run, and as far as we know, we can say never stop. The Searle effect is an effect based on magnetic fields that generate the continual motion of magnetized rollers around magnetized rings, producing electric energy. The generator runs in harmony with nature. The law of the squares is harmony with nature. But the Searle effect is a great deal more than a simple generator. In our polluted and energy-starved world, it is the hope of all mankind that we find the solutions that lead us to both prosperity and harmony with nature. Is it possible to maintain mankind's industrial output and at the same time reduce the pollutants that are slowly killing planet Earth? Is there a way to increase the productivity of the human species as we rid ourselves of the poisons and recover the waters of this world? If we're going to get the climate back to what we want, a lot of work got to be done. One thing is certain, you need energy. That's important. And it must be cheap as possible. Preferable, no pollution. No noise, no heat, no vibration, no pollution. The Searle Effect Generator. The perfect machine? As you build this, it, when you find out that it runs without friction, it runs without a governor, it runs will accept any load and meet it, it will dive down in temperature at one point if you build it cor correctly and actually levitate and actually lift off the Earth, developing its own gravitational field. When you see all these things, and you realize that this is a perfect machine. It is an entity. It's the closest thing to a living thing that man can make. Does John Searle have the answer? Is John Searle's invention the point of impact between the question, what if there is a machine that could save mankind, and the answer, the Searle Effect Generator? People say, well, you can't do this. You're going to upset the entire world economy. The whole economy is based on oil, and it works, they're saying. Well, it works very well for the people who are running the economy, but not necessarily for everyone else. I still maintain that it will not ruin the economy. It will be a very strong paradigm shift, much the same as the shift from horse and buggy to automobile. Surely this point of impact would produce energy of its own, human energy, emotional energy, joy, relief, hope, wonder, or perhaps the darker side of human emotions, greed, hate, and jealousy. All these years I've learned one thing, you can't trust anyone with this technology, they want to steal it. And any worker 
see this and find out how it works, could sell it to another company for millions. Because this too is the Searle effect. Put simply, quantum mechanics is the study of the relationship between energy and matter. In particular, the relationship between electrons and photons the area in which the actual Searle effect takes place. It's photons. That's the role of grounding their energy to the coil. It is simply throwing photons out. That is what you see trapped in the magnetic field around it. Albert Einstein's contribution E equals MC squared made way for huge strides in science. Very soon, abstract mathematical proofs would replace ether theory as the best explanation of all things and their relativity. Others, like Nikolai Tesla, would cling to the idea that energy was all around us and that we could access this energy and transport it through the atmosphere without the need for meters or utility companies. While the greatest minds of the 20th century uncovered theories about how the universe works, far beneath this lofty exchange, John Searle was dreaming. I had dreams, and those dreams are the key to all the work which I do. In fact, they're the key to all my knowledge. The Searle effect is developed from the law of the squares, and it is from these squares that John Searle developed his generator and flying disks. But he didn't stop there. Over the course of his lifetime, John Searle's understanding of the squares would be used by him to explain all aspects of life in the universe, from DNA to relativity, from single-celled life to the human being. From transportation to construction of buildings, the squares could be used to understand everything. When I took up my training as an apprentice electrical engineer, about the third day I was presented a docket to take to the stores, and I saw this tube with a small tube buff. I asked the foreman what that meant. He said, that's two square. So I said, well, what is two squares? So he draws two by two, tell me four squares, four. But you can take a square, if you run the numbers in normal, one, two, three, four, five, six, that is uniform in. But when you token them up, each row, each column, each diagonal, you'll find they add up different. Putting numbers in random, we come up with a uniform output. Every line, every column, the two diagonals come up precisely the same. Random numbers in squares will produce a uniform total. John Searle would soon call this the law of the squares, nature's way of achieving order from chaos. This led to Searle's revelation. From those numbers, John Searle had the exact amount of each ingredient in the rollers and rings of his generator. Now, every one square represent a quantity of a material. And that's very important. This is precisely how I developed the SEG. So I copy nature in every way. I work at trying to think how nature is doing it and then produce this object. World War II had ended, brought about by the most devastating weapons ever conceived. The product of those lofty minds who 20 years earlier wondered what would happen if you hit a single atom hard enough. What kind of energy was stored in this tiny place? The answer, they thought, is the source of all energy in the universe. The practical answer was bang. In fact, the biggest bang mankind could ever devise. Einstein opened the door a bit further. Like most people, they come up with a wonderful formula. Einstein did. And then he stops at that and says, there's no way you can get this mass of energy out of an atom. The cost would be too high, it's not worth it. Then you see you get another person comes along and thinks about this. Oh no, just bump it with a proton or a neutron. Some of the vocabulary, words like volts, ohms, amps and watts. By 1946, John Searle had a different idea. How could this energy be tapped without smashing the atom into bits? His idea was a completely new generator design. We didn't call them self effect generators then, but we were just trying to produce a generator to run the house lights on. 
because I felt that the big generators at the power stations were a waste of money would present to us vast pollution problems in the future. So the whole idea was to get something to produce electricity. Basically the design is a conventional generator as far as how it looks. You've got a magnet passing by a coil. In all generators of electricity are based on magnetics and coils. You can pass a coil by a magnet or a magnet by a coil, but that gives you your deflection in the electron flow and the force in one direction. I already knew most of the fundamentals. What I was doing here was trying to get rid of the petrol engine or other devices to turn the generator. That was the objective. The two key issues are electrons and magnetic fields. John Searle understood the basic principles for generating electricity. He knew electricity was made up of electrons traveling down the wires into our homes. To generate, you've got to have electrons for motion, great motion. That's why you go to the rare earth. The primary component is a rare earth. Although it can be any of the rare earths, the component that we use is neodymium. That's element number 60 on the periodic chart. And that unit puts out an excess of electrons for some reason, and it will also replenish them very easily. Rare earth is the greatest weight of the whole materials that you're using. That has got to hold the mass of electrons. John Searle's idea was to find a way to ease those spare electrons out of the structure and use them. Instead of smashing the atom into bits, why not tap this vast electron reservoir by using magnetic fields, same as any generator of that time? So, I say to myself, if you can release all the energy with a simple particle, surely we could ease it out gently by tunneling it, tunneling it in and giving it something to run up. So if we put a straight line, magnetic line, through and the electron spins around, all this energy is spinning around and come out, we'll get a constant flow. Tunneling into the atom using a specific magnetic field will cause the electrons to move in one direction and they can be collected and used. With production of electricity, you have two choices. You either rotate the magnetic field or you rotate the conductors. In our case, we rotate the magnetic flux. So as the roller rotates, it's also rotating around the base plate. To make his generator work, John Searle had to overcome many problems. Most of these occurred with the shape and design of his magnets and in the behavior of their magnetic fields. How can you make a round magnet orbit another round magnet without stopping or flying off? He studied the behavior of a bar magnet and a round magnet. There's nothing wrong with this. It's got a turning action on it. It was tormenting me. There was that must be able to go straight. I placed it on and it kept straight. And not only did it keep straight, it really moved up and down. What happens if you make a ring? He knew magnetic fields could be impressed or printed on certain materials using a magnetizer, a device common to shops and factories that use magnets. The person that baffled scientists is why, when three was on, they just run round and round. The picture here was there was two states involved here, and of course there is. The two states referred to the two magnetic fields printed at right angles to each other. Both the roller and the plate had independent magnetic fields, one vertical and the other radial from the center to the rim. Clearly, the magnetic field was completely different to the magnetic fields we knew of. For some reason, why they were different at the time, I had no idea. The intersection of these two fields produces a wave that carries the roller around the ring. Although this wave was unknown at the time the phenomenon was present. So we got fields at right angles. That's why the whole thing moves. If you haven't got two fields, it won't move. Now the two key issues for the production of electricity were present in a totally new generator design. The electrons were available in the rare earth material. The magnetic fields induced the roller to run on the plate. We didn't even know what the field looked like till a few years ago in Germany when we remade a segment. I said, well, let's have a look at this field. And we dusted it with very fine iron dust, shook off the surface. Do you know what that looked like? 
a bicycle wheel. That is the feel that makes this work. Any other feel won't work. That feel does it. So we know that the magnetic field can be set to perform functions quite different to what we were taught in my day at school. And I think we're only scratching the surface of magnetism. Was this thing a generator? It created an extremely high voltage, but John Searle had no control over it whatsoever. With each experiment came a new set of questions. My magnetism is not your magnetism. Could it be that general magnetism contains multiple bands, a magnetic spectrum, exactly the same as white light contains a spectrum of colors? Magnetism is identical to light. In a way, that's how I look at it. They are identical, they're pairs. John Searle used a combination of AC and DC current when magnetizing the components of his generator. If we isolate the particular band we want, and then print that. We have something different, we have a way. This is the Searle effect. The intersection of two magnetic fields creating a magnetic wave that can be measured and amplified. John Searle designed a generator using magnetic fields to induce a flow of electrons from a rare earth element through a system of rotating magnetized components so that those electrons would be collected, compressed, used and recycled. Magnetic forces and electrons in motion, the two key issues necessary for the production of electricity. If a condition where you can get a wave in a magnetic sense, like a wave, a sine wave, and they act as a river. Now they're stationary until reaction effects takes place. And to do that, you have to sit a cylinder on it, magnetized, and then that wave goes into motion. Now the roll it place on that field, it floats. We know it cannot touch that, it's too dense with energy, so it will float. So we got something floating there, then if this wave is moved due to reaction between this plate, this roller and this plate, then that wave is going to carry that regardless. So the roller maintains still its constant height. Though it's now running many times faster, it does not fly off. The magnetic field is holding the roller tightly to the plate. At the same time, the electrons moving through the layered elements are collected and compressed on the surface of the plate, lifting the roller and creating space between the roller and the plate. So the roller flies around and doesn't roll around. As it moves, the field is being rewritten all the time. So the field never diminishes. It cannot diminish because a magnetic field is in constant running order. The energy or electrons moving through the system recycle. The rare earth element attracts new electrons that also move through the system and recycle. Because of their negative charge, the electrons compress, causing the drop in temperature and creating the energy field that radiates from the generator. In 1956, I was soldering. I, I had to produce another unit. And this time, we wasn't powering it up. I wanted to try to meter up things to see what the oscilloscope was showing me. And it was accidental that when I took the hot iron to solder the wire on, I couldn't solder it. Selling from the machine was cooling things faster than you could heat them. That was accounting for some of the behavior of those early models. Counter for why when I got a hold of it, I was stuck to it. John Searle created a generator design that became a superconductor, producing extreme cold and incredibly high voltage that caused it to lift off the ground. But could he control this flying disc generator? One thing I didn't know was that A, gravity can be inversed. No scientists ever had come up with that idea. That clearly the magnetic field was completely different to the magnetic fields we knew of. The heavy rollers spinning as they rotate around the plates acted like a flywheel and caused a gyroscopic effect. 
The extremely high voltage created a dense field surrounding the generator, a device built with individually magnetized components. Incorporating these principles displayed by the device, he christened it Gyro Flywheel High Energy Density Mechanical Magnetic Device, but it would soon be known as the Levity Disc. You've got to put a load, resistance load, on the generator to speed it up. And once it starts, you get to about, uh, on average, about a million volts. It begins to really build up a charge. Then the superconductivity switches in and the earth pushes it up. But it's also affecting the atmosphere above it. It is making it pull to the rim and rotate with a field. So you've got a, like a hurricane effort. It's sucking it up. There's a magnetic field, there's a gap, a vacuum between that and the rim, and it's the photons which is discharged, trapped by the magnetic field, which gives it the glow. Basically, the solar effect was meant to turn the ether, which is all around us, which contains energy, and tap into this energy, which has euphemistically now been known as zero-point energy. And various other people who followed Searle's footsteps have also potted around, and they've tapped into it by mistake. I can understand why people would have difficulty in understanding it, because it does take a great deal of effort uh, uh, to make sense of it technically. Fernando Morris, an electrical engineer and computer specialist, is responsible for the most credible attempt to rebuild the Searle effect generator. We have something here that needs to be investigated, and really that's my role. I am a technical investigator of ESCG. In his home laboratory workshop near San Diego, California, Morris is following the footsteps of John Searle. Personally guided by Searle himself, he is rebuilding the generator precisely as Searle did long ago. Morris developed the unit that reveals a magnetic sine wave in the Searle generator. That's how I started off, is to try to build a magnetizer for it. And if I could de develop this sine wave, which I'd never heard of before, I think we're onto something and we can build upon that. Now that, has been, that is proven, repeatable, and I've got the unit to do that. It's a process of magnetizing uh, the rollers and the plate. And when you develop sine waves on it, what you, in effect, you're developing a motor. And that's essential if it's going to be a viable device. That is exactly what I've been saying since 1946. There is a waveform in a magnetic domain on that metal. And the scientists say, impossible. After years of studying Searle's books, trying to decipher their meaning, and endless question and answer sessions with the man himself, what does he know that assures him Searle is right? I'm going to release a piece of information here that I've shared before, and that is the law of squares. That's one of those question marks right now, is how does that come about? It took me a while to understand it, but what it is, it represents time, space, and energy. And what it says, it's in a random state. That's not useful energy. But what John has done, he's tr he has transposed that matrix so that the output is uniform. And uh, within nature, uniformity means resonance. So if you can resonate that random energy, you got yourself an electric current because electrons are the only things that are free to move on metal. So what we got here is a converter of random energy into electrical current. And that's the brilliance behind the machine here is not only was John able to decipher his matrix, but he was able to make it into a workable device. And that's the SEG. Morris's mock-up of the SEG needs an outside power source, just like Searle's original back in 1946. This unit does not contain the rare earth material and will not display the Searle effect. It was built to demonstrate Searle's contention that spinning magnets give off an electric charge as measured by the flashing LEDs. What will be the reaction if and when the Searle generator functions as the inventor assures it will? I think the public will demand to know why has this technology been ignored? Why have the experts failed to recognize it? John has a solution that is 
really the ultimate solution because it's, we're using energy that's already available in nature and it's benign. Uh, I think we have a wonderful opportunity here. It's a shame it hasn't, it hasn't been uh, taken advantage of. I mean, John has been struggling to get this technology out for years. John A. Thomas Jr. wrote a book about Searle, then formed a corporation with him in 1996, DISC, Direct International Science Consortium, for the purpose of rebuilding the Searle generator. Thomas's study of the Searle effect has convinced him beyond any doubt that Searle is telling the truth. In the United States, he has not heard of Professor Searle. They don't know who in the hell he is. The people of this world have been offered this technology in a refined form that usable since the early 50s. And it was their right to have it. And it's been taken away from them by the media and by the power companies and by the people who are running this economic society. And we have been told that we cannot have this and it can't exist. Yeah, we could be living in a new world today that we should have had 25 years ago. John Searle has since reformed the Searle International Space Research Consortium, or SISRC, an offshoot of his earlier organization. The Searle effect generator represents a fork in the road of scientific development that was abandoned nearly a century ago when ether theory became a relic of the past. The trouble is we're confronted by a brick wall called the expert scientific world. If they haven't done it or cannot do it, it's impossible to do. Impo All these years, 1964, we were at a peak, we were demonstrating, and still the scientists say it's impossible to do. Really? Well, we're going to show you. They're wrong. And they have held up this technology since 1946 to today. Perhaps it's easier to believe that Searle's technology does not exist. The Searle effect generator at first look seems to violate known physical laws. Energy must come from somewhere. John says he found it in the rare earth material. Could it be that simple? Searle speaks his own language, a combination of known physics and terms he created to describe his invention. Numbers in squares told Searle that nature has a way of creating order out of chaos. Does the Searle effect generator convert random energy into usable electricity? When his generator is overloaded, it affects gravity and flies. John says he gave it a body and let it fly. What is the truth? German philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer was once quoted as saying, All truth passes through three stages. First, it is ridiculed. Second, it is violently opposed. Third, it is accepted as being self-evident. Could it be that John Searle's technology is passing through Schopenhauer's three phases of truth? The movement toward alternative energy sources is worldwide and essential. The promise of a working Searle effect generator represents a paradigm shift and a renewed hope for all life on Earth.